cried while watching The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? No. No. Never have no. I ever been approached to be on The Bachelor? What do you have to say in response to the out of system boys who think that you two would be the perfect candidates for said show? I wouldn't be good for that. <laughs> I think I'd be horrible at that show. I only watched one season when I was in Italy because my, my buddy and his fiance drafted like the, the girls on The Bachelor. So we watched like every Tuesday or whatever it came out. Sure. Whatever. That's only one, one season I watched, but no, I think I'd be horrible at that show. I mean, just no, they about said it. you guys are both like emotional. You wear your hearts on your sleeve. This is what, you know, well, only Capono is valid now, but like, it's what <laughs> the ladies look for. They're looking for a vulnerable candidate, Pono. Like, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, somebody that can, somebody that can cry while watching The Notebook and still bench two plates, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, would you no, the whole concept is just weird. That's just so weird. I think if it was yeah. a bachelorette, I wouldn't be able to get past the first night. There's just guys like hogging time just from watching that one time. It's like, I would just be the guy sitting on the couch eating all the free food. Like, no, you guys go. Yo, I'll get my turn later. <laughs> you like, wow, this air, this air conditioning is top notch, man. You never get your turn. There's always like that one dude like in the jacuzzi just like having the time of his life. <laughs> That's probably that would be me for sure. I would be like completely disregarding the girl, probably. Yeah. I'd be sitting in the jacuzzi, just like taking shots or something. There's like 50 girls like trying to chase her. I'd be like, yeah, she'll come to me. She'll figure. <laughs> um, yeah, I have been I have been approached for that. Uh, there's a show. I got uh, an agent and like a NBC agent or something. Someone. Uh, it's a while ago. I actually forgot to even respond to the message. Uh, I think the show is called Love Island, but I'm not sure. They wanted to like cast me for it and stuff. I didn't even respond to it because obviously, like, I'm in a relationship and just don't have any interest in it. But like, I have been approached for one of those shows. But it's like with The Bachelor and Bachelorette, like, I can count on one hand like the number of episodes I've watched of that. I may I don't know like all the criteria of of the show and everything. And it's just not something like reality TV to me is just kind of like. You watch it, and you're just like, how are these people actually this stupid? I think it's crazy how famous they get. And yeah. then you're kind of just in that bubble for the rest of your life, too, which kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah. That's like the kind of, like, clout or, like, fame I, I wouldn't want. Yeah. Right, yeah. Victoria? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I am picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. <laughs> but it is crazy. I've worked on a few reality TV shows. I mean, you don't realize all that stuff happens because like you're so secluded. Like we take your phones, you're living in a house for a month, basically pump you full of alcohol and like maybe feed you here and there. But it's you're in this remote place and like everything is at hyperspeed compared to reality because like you're in this tiny little bubble. That's how they kind of like get reactions out of you and make like good TV. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the strategies, the unknown strategies of the reality TV world. <laughs> Running wild with bear girls. That is something I'd go. That's on. a good show. I would go on that. I'd go on I'll Running go Wild on with bear girls versus The Bachelor any day. Oh, okay. like, what reality would, TV show would you want to be on? Like, all right. Running wild with bear girls one's cool. Like, I wouldn't mind eating a couple bugs and a worm. Maybe That's so funny though. Bear, we've been hiking all day, and we're gonna get all our nutrients from this beetle. <laughs> this one beetle, oh, yeah, and literally ten mile it, hike tomorrow. Sounds like such a like stereotypical me response. But the latest episode I watched was with the uh, forget her name, the actress that plays Captain Marvel. And Bear Girls was like, "We're yeah, like you said, we've been traveling all day across the wilderness. We need to get some nutrients in this bug that I caught has like fifty six <laughs> grams of protein." And I was just like. <laughs> going on Amazon trying to find like this bug <laughs> see if I can order a bag of them or something I really like that show though that's a cool that's a good show my dream reality tv show that I would like go wipe out, I want to be on wipe out. oh wipe out that's a good one I want to be on oh. wipe out for sure I want to be on the amazing grace so badly like Ooh. so so badly and I already have my partner. Her name's Carly DeHogue. She's one of my bestest <laughs> friends. She played volleyball at Washington. We're both 6'3", 10 years of friendships, or friendship. It would be great. Like, and I know, like, we could win it, for sure. That's a cool one. I don't do anything that involves cardio, though. Traveling all over the world. 
Wipeout is hilarious. I would totally do that. Wipeout's another weird one because you know there's a dude just with a button just waiting yeah. for them. Like, all right, you're trying to time it. Trying to go <laughs> yeah, and then like the, the like, fists coming out of the finally wall. Get, yeah, I finally get the courage. Like, all right, I'm doing it. And you go and you just press the button and they just get smacked in the face. There's a job you can do if you ever decide to stop playing volleyball. You can be the button guy on Wipeout. <laughs> oh, I love to. It's so funny. Wipeout's hilarious. Oh, American Ninja Warrior. That would be if I if I could train for that, it'd be cool to do. But it's like I just imagine like those guys do it, like that's their life. It's like being yeah. like a like training calisthenics, body weight yeah. maneuvering and stuff. Strength to just like yeah, I yeah I couldn't I couldn't hold on to that stuff. There's no way I'd be strong enough like pound for pound. Yeah. And then just like the disappointment, like you could train that long and then one one split second mistake. You're in the water and like you're just done, and it could be on like the first obstacle, and then you're just embarrassed. Since Joe but, shouted out us last time, I have a great story about Joe with needles. Do share. If that's okay. Please proceed. Joe hates needles. Joe Worsley hates needles. He can't handle it. Colton, were you there this past summer? We had to give tested or something. We had to give blood so they could see all of our like vitamin level or whatever, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so me, there's like two people drawing blood and we had to rotate it at some different times. And one of our guys, Carson Clark, he's a lefty and she was trying to get blood drawn on his right. And Joe hates needles. Like he can't look at it, he can't do anything. But this lady couldn't find his vein. So she stuck on the first time, she couldn't get it. Stuck on the second time, <laughs> couldn't get it. And it's like, I'm a lefty. And he's kind of pissed because he just wants to get out of there. So she stuck the left arm, she got it. She opened up, I'm like, Joe, Joe. She took it out the lady. I was like freaking about it. Like, Joe, Joe, this, this lady like, this thing, like stabbed him three times to get the blood out. And Joe's like freaking out. And our other trainers right there. I'm like, dude, you got to give this lady to Joe. And she's ready, please. <laughs> and so Joe goes up and he's like freaking out because he's so scared of needles. He just he just couldn't handle it. Like, I thought he was going to But like, obviously, she found it on the first try. It was all right. But it was so funny because all like the before – it happens, right? All that fear before he just even does it is hilarious. It was so funny. Oh, poor Jeff. Yeah, it's always funny Jeff. seeing people. It's always funny seeing people that aren't in their like aren't in their element, or like yeah. when they're actually like tested like that. Yeah, he definitely overcame it that day. So <laughs> good on him. Yeah, good job, Joe. Way to overcome your yeah, fear. Yeah, good job, Joe. <laughs> so from athletes uncensored. Never have I ever googled my own name to see what comes up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Of course, of course I have, I have. Two. I have two. Everyone. I think yeah. everyone. Has. I just I just want like one day to like have like a Wikipedia page. Like that's it. I want a Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah. I think I have one. But that was the only one I went to Italy and like it's small, I think. I just want my kids to be able to find me. <laughs> Your kids to find you? Yeah. Yeah, someone made me. <laughs> Everything one. I do now is for my kids. I don't care about it for me. But it's all in Italian. For the kids, like, in 15 years or whenever that's going to happen. Yeah, of course. I think everyone does that. I don't think it's weird. Is it weird? <laughs> no. No. I think probably most everybody has done that. Have, have you found you ever, anything weird? Have I found anything weird? Off Google. Mm, when I was playing in Peru, I was, like, out to dinner with, like, my American friends and then, like, our soccer friends. And then the next day, there was, like, a TMZ Peru article, like, who's dating who, like, seen out at a restaurant. I was like, what is happening? Like, this is so weird. Like, it was literally, it was crazy. We were just, like, in a big group. And then, like, the next thing I know, this, like, article came out. And I was like, what the heck? It was That's weird. crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Wow, you're famous over there. I just, I guess so. I don't know. It was kind of, yeah, that was pretty wild. That's when I was like, Oh, like you can't go anywhere or do anything without people like knowing your business. Definitely like that in my small town in Italy. Have you guys found anything weird? I think not only too weird, just like sometimes like a fake profile or something like like people have used my pictures on like dating apps. And like that's wow. like that's kind of back into the, the weird DMs that I receive is like some like random people will just like be like, Hey, just wanted to let you know that this, under this name, this person's using your profile. So naturally I don't like have the apps, but I was able to access like the, the web version of it from whatever to get to the profile. And I looked at it and like, I was stoked, man. I was like, I was the mathematics major. 
I was studying for vet school and like a bunch of cool stuff. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know I did that. That's cool, man. All right. <laughs> what do you expect? Oh, yeah. Athletes Uncensored. Welcome to Athletes Uncensored. Athletes Uncensored? Nice. That's awesome. We're playing Never Have I Ever questions. And I asked him if you ever kicked him out of bed <laughs> snoring too loud or, you know, doing anything. Really? I said drooling. He actually doesn't snore, but yeah, he definitely he drools. drools. I've like caught some in my hair and I'm like, no. <laughs> Thank you for giving them premium content. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. Drool my hair. All right, you're making them uncomfortable now. <laughs> All right. I, I, love it. I, see you guys. I feel like I need to ask the couple a question now since I have them on the show. Yeah, sure. Okay. Shoot it. Shoot oh, it. No, it Fire it away. Pono, co host with me here. Let's ask All the right. couple some questions. On athletes on sense. How do you annoy your significant other? Doing anything at any time. <laughs> That's a good question. How do I annoy you? You never do. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Good answer. I'm I'm prepared for this one. Probably because I'm like I'm I can be really loud. I'm always like singing and just loud, and he's like trying to go to bed, and I'm like just doesn't annoy me. I'm making so much noise, like doing the dishes or whatever, and he's just like, "All right, I'm trying to go to bed." I'm like, "Okay," <laughs> so maybe. That was a terrible response. Oh, I don't know. Like I said, at any point during the day, it can be anything I'm doing that annoys her. There's too many things to count on one hand. But that's what makes us so compatible. So it's I'm always annoyed. And she does nothing to annoy me ever. There's there's like there's not a thing she can do that would annoy me. So I'm always like, Colton. That's, in. that's like, my I'm final answer. Adam. All right, I got a question. All right. You play, you play beach volleyball, Colton. Obviously, you play beach volleyball. Have you guys played together? If you guys have <laughs> So how does that go? How does that work? It has progressively yeah, gotten better. It's That's progressively it. gotten better. It used to be like, all right, go stand in the corner and set me the ball. And, uh, or like, I'd be hyper competitive. But now it's gotten like more cooperative. We just split the court. Like, I don't get competitive unless somebody on the other side of the net hits a ball too hard at her or pisses me off. And then it's over. But until that point, like, it's, 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 <laughs> getting, it's gotten very cooperative. So. Let's just say the Waimea four man. We were on the opposite teams in the finals, okay. and he. I was hitting every single ball angle because she was standing the down line. the line, and I was like, "Just hit at me, damn it!" And then he hits me in the face, yeah. <laughs> and then I was pissed, and I was like, "All right." I hit one ball line, one ball line, and it like nailed her in the head, and I was just like. Okay, I'm just gonna call it. They, they, this team can have the win. I'm gonna go home. And then the and then, and then the drive and back. Then I, and then I walked the home. I walked home from my man. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. always happens though. I feel like that always happens. I remember just like here at home, we play like a grass games, like two on two. The girl I was dating at the time when I was in like high school was playing on the other team, and I tried to like bounce like my cousins there. I don't know. I was just like we were playing. I found it was really competitive, and I hit her in the face, and she's not a volleyball player. And at that moment, I was just like, all right, we're always going to play on the same team from now on. Yeah. That is, that's the worst feeling. Yeah, it is. So who won the game? He did. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but I beat him earlier in pool play. So. Yeah, in pool play, they beat me. and then Pretty pool, bad. When it matters. <laughs> there you go. She has to, like, beat me, try to beat me in everything. But I don't. And she beat me in a board game once last year, and she, like, still to this day gloats about it. Like, that's – it's the only thing she's pretty much ever beaten me in. And she still brings it up to people. And I'm like – especially, like, she loves presenting. Like, when people come over, she's like, we're going to play this game because I beat Colton in it. I'm like, yeah. great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. What game was it? Was it? Like jung it was, like, jungle speed. It's one where you have, like, cards that are, like, only some of them match. And, like, everyone flips. And if you have a match, you have, like, grab this totem pole. And I've, like, played it since I was, like, 12, so I know all the cards, so I just, like, whoop, grab them. But it was, let's just call it fair, and that it was a fair square win on my part. <laughs> I will say, Colton, knowing you, you get more competitive on the beach. Yeah, I do. Yeah. A lot more yeah. competitive. I don't know why. On the beach, like, yeah, beach, like, someone guy, could do something. On the beach, it's another level. It's more, it's kind of more intimate. Like, I feel like indoor, you get away with being one of six people, but on the sand, it's you and somebody else. So you're touching every ball and you're involved in every play. So I feel like it's more intimate in that way, you know? That's a good way to put it. That thank yeah. you for justifying yeah. why I get more competitive. Thank you. <laughs> more personal. And then if, if it's baby courted outrigger, there's, yeah, there's, there's never a more competitive me. 
than baby corn and outrigger. I want to throttle you on the baby corn. Sydney, do you drink as much protein as Colton? Oh my Why God, do you think no! How much protein Lord. Colton intakes daily? No, this kid has like I swear like twenty different <laughs> bottles of like supplements and like five different proteins. Like oh no, but this one does this, and then this one has a little bit more of this, and then like different it is flavors. Working. It's working. Yeah, but he's always trying to like give them to me, and I'm like, nah, I got my like plant protein. I'm good. <laughs> I tried to give him some of mine. He's actually adjusting more to plant protein, so I'm kind of happy about that. Cleaner. Oh. It, ju nice. it just smells really bad on the other end. That's all. It's the only thing with plant protein. When it comes out, it's uh, <laughs> okay. horrible. But it's good for you. Like, let's weigh the options here. You know. It's super good for you yeah. until it's you have to deal with what comes from it. Do you guys have any like embarrassing stories like with each other's families? I oh, he is the biggest kiss up you will ever meet. Like, <laughs> good it's, lord! It's her mom. That's no, not my dad too. My dad, my dad tells me after he meets him for the first time, this dude got to chill. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's trying way too hard. Like purposely will deepen his voice, talk like way less like natural. He'll try to be like extra smart and use extra like more i don't know like words try to be, like, try to be articulate that means he cares. Yeah, try to be more articulate he with his like words dude like how he is in interviews you'll see he kind of like <laughs> talks like that to my parents and i'm like these are my parents be normal <laughs> so yeah i mean but the first time you meet somebody somebody's family that you care about it is almost an interview type situation yeah, it is an interview. it's gotten more natural over time for sure like now it's i'm joking with them and stuff and everything's good also it also depends on how their family members are we have different types of families yeah. <laughs> so like socially it's it's a little bit of a an adjustment his is like super like family super sweet super like everyone's super loving and close and mine's a little more like complicated so is what it is but yeah i think my to answer my own question i guess i'll share a story como's family and como's half filipino half polish and we were at some restaurant it's a delicacy um i don't know if it was a filipino de delicacy or it might have been we were at a japanese restaurant they take a raw quail egg shot and it's in a little shot glass and it's a quail egg raw quail egg with some like hot sauce and vinegar and you just oh, no. it. and it's just a raw egg and i just like everyone did it and then it came down to me and i was like okay like I have to do oh, I could it. not. I could not. So, yeah, I just like went one, two, three, and I took it. And there's a video of me, and like I gag a little bit, but then I keep it down. So uh, that oh. was kind of kind of embarrassing because I was the only one that like gagged, but I still did it. So I mean, yeah. that's a count. You do it. You're gonna have to. That's peer pressure. As long as you follow through, which you it's did. It's like, it's like oh. initiation into his family. <laughs> like, his mom was like, come on, you got to do it. And I was like, you're oh. right, you're right. <laughs> Colton, you ever chug eggs like, uh, is that Rocky? Egg whites. I have. They don't taste egg. good. Raw they don't egg. taste good, but luckily I lost. I had a gag, like the gag at first. But I never like it never came back up. But like I'd be like, oh, that sucks. Now if I did it, it just still sucks. But it's easy. It's like apple cider vinegar too. Thank you for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for bringing her on, guys. Some tough questions. Yeah, they were. You guys tried to put me in a hole there for a second. You gotta see if you can float, sink or swim, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually terrible at floating. Fun fact, I can't float. Do you have like an irrational fear? Yeah, old ladies. <laughs> Old ladies scare me. But not like my grandma, like not like old ladies, but like only old cartoony ladies for some reason. The cartoon witches with the big nose and the warts on it and stuff. Yeah, that's like, that's, yeah. I mean, there's us like, for sure, like if I'm out in the middle of the ocean and I can't see the bottom of the ocean, I don't think there's anybody that isn't afraid of that. Like when I went shark diving and I was looking down and it's like a hundred feet plus, yeah, and it's, like, darker as it goes down. I'm like, yeah, it's an abyss down there. I'm like, that's crazy that something could be down there. Yeah, I think I think when I can't see the bottom of the water, I think that's everyone, though. Colton, what are your pet peeves? May 17th, 2020, under biggest pet peeve is peer pressure. Peer, peer pressure getting pisses peer me pressure? off. Getting peer pressured? Getting peer pressured, like, I handle it better than or most. Like, I'm not afraid to tell people to just, like, someone else get peer pressured. Yeah, watching someone else get peer pressured and then see them fall through with it, that makes me 
pissed off when I get peer pressured. It's not as as bad necessarily because like I've now gotten to the point where if someone's gonna like try to get me to do something, like I'm okay with telling them to completely like buzz off. Like I don't have any remorse for that. At this point in my life, like I'm extremely committed to like my process, and if someone isn't gonna be a part of that or is like doing things that don't contribute towards that. I don't really have an interest in them and I'm not afraid to cut them out of my life. You're so hardcore. <laughs> That's just how it is. And it's like, usually like I give, a lot of, I give a lot of opportunities or like I designate time to have fun and do whatever and stuff. But if it's like things that I'm not interested in and the things that are definitely going to hold me back or like affect what I can do, I don't partake in that kind of stuff. That's valid. Yeah. Well, that's just saying, you know, being, um, never drinking coffee again is also another answer, but that's a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, though. I mean, that's a great point. Yeah, solid answer. I was thinking more like keeping dishes in the sink. Like, <laughs> there, wash the dishes. I don't know. I grew up without really. Well, you would get along with Sydney you really well. So it's like, I mean, what's soaking a plate really? Come on, let's just wash it. All right, that's it for today's show, guys. Please make sure to subscribe, like, comment. If you want to see them on the show again, let us know. More content coming to you soon. Episodes drop every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. And we'll see you here next time.